Hello everybody and welcome once again to All the Fabric 3. So today we are going to carry on with TIS 3D and we shall have a look at some other modules and we'll also have a look at um, the program again. So let's get started. So here in my hand I have an anvil, actually it's a, a netherite anvil, anvil so it probably never breaks. I hope that's in case because it's expensive. <laughs> anyway, so let's have a look at this program and I'm going to put up a picture now and we shall have a look at this picture. So here we have the program and the state diagram. So the state diagram is here on the left hand side and the program is here on the right hand side. Now in the build that we've done we've have a, a redstone module on the right hand side and one module on the, above it of the execution module. So the first thing that happens in the program is we move zero into the redstone module above the execution module and what that does is just an indicator to show you what state the program is currently in. So the first thing that then happens, we go down here to the move right into the accumulator. So that's moving the signal that's coming in to the accumulator. And then we're jumping to idle, which is here from this line, if that is zero. And then basically we've got this state here, that's idle. So we're going around this loop here. And this is this transition. So it's doing nothing, it's not moving anywhere. So as soon as the state becomes non-zero, which is this, this line, transition down here going to the running state like this we, we start from here so we've it's non-zero so we go past this jump so we move 15 up to the redstone module and then we jump to running well that actually isn't much of a jump we could exclude that altogether but just for consistency i'll put it down here and then we move uh we check the accumulator again and then we move that sorry we check the redstone signal again and we move that into the accumulator and then we jump uh up to running when that is uh, non-zero so this is this loop here so it's we're in the state running and it's jumping around going back here every time it goes through the loop which is doing nothing at all until this state becomes zero so this was really for the uh, conjuring sulfur forge and as you put something in it started to process and when it finished it gave a redstone signal of zero so it started at one and carried on to 15 and that was the last one so when it gets zero which is so it keeps jumping here until it's non-zero and as soon as it's zero it moves zero upwards into the redstone module to show you it's not actually running anymore and then it's jumping to idle so it's jumping up to here again and this is this transition around here like this as you can see um, and basically that's it I hope that explains it clearly so one of the problems was this it was actually going across here and it was basically what it's doing is this redstone signal what these redstone signals represent there's two there's two arrows one up and one down so the down one represents the value on the external side and the up one represents the value of the internal one so there's nothing coming in here from from the uh from the execution unit which is this one so here we do have it we've got the value set to 15 because we've got a value in here but what was happening is this now what we can fix that and the way we fix it with the key so let's have a look here's a key and then you can it tells you which ones of these are unlocked here but uh but well, so what you can do is you can lock things up for example let's just lock up these ones here uh, <laughs> do it like that and then of course you can't remove these you can't take them off and i can't reprogram this this block either here so it's not possible to change any of those values until you unlock them but when you hold shift down here um on the key i've locked up this block i need to unlock it first of all because it doesn't work for sugar you'll see that here you've got different ports they call them ports it's described in the manual so these are import ports so if we lock this import port up here by shift right clicking it you'll see that now we move it out of the key this value doesn't change anymore it's still constant at seven if i actually lock up the bottom one of these like this it's not going to get any values in so if i then drop this value down let's say i put it up to nine here that gives a value of nine as you can see this is not being updated and the reason it's not being updated is because this particular this particular corner is locked so we'll unlock it again and then when we look at it again it'll be now nine as you can see in fact you can put that down to seven and it'll go down to seven so that's one way of preventing interactions between 
different faces or call edge sides that you don't want things to be interacting with. And the locking is quite handy, it prevents you accidentally right clicking something and removing that block. So let's just right click this with the key like that. I've also put a repeater here because that's a much more sensible thing to do than just put a pulse in it because it, it would then repeat that pulse for a period of time which is fixed which would have been a much thing more sensible thing to do last time anyway I didn't do that so, so that was the end of that we can test test this again now so if I just turn off this it should go down and it should give a pulse out here like that and that pulse stays as you can see for a period of time one thing I if I remove this here and I'm not and I let the program run too long what will happen is that this redstone signal that you've got coming out of here will be picked up by the out this face so I did them in the wrong order for one time while I was testing it I couldn't understand why this program was suddenly running fast and that was the reason for it because it was beside this block and it was the information is getting pushed across and even locking up oh that doesn't help anymore so sort of unlock this one yeah, it. And even locking up these corners here, I have to press shift and do that way, saying I don't want this coming in from here, which would prevent it. It still didn't work, it just still made it go fast. I was a bit confused. So I think that's probably clear as to now what's going on. So let's have a look at something else. So what I want to look at is this here, a code Bible. Use a book on an installed execution module to get a copy. Uh, that doesn't mean what it says. It means actually make a uh, make a book. Here I've got a book. So let's just, and another right bow. Let's just right click this onto this execution module here and it changes. It's now a code Bible. Okay. It might actually have the program in it. It doesn't yet. But if you shift, if you right click it again, have a look at this. Maybe I have to shift right click it. Yeah, if you shift right click it, then you get the program copied into this book and you can then change the, the, the program as you want to like that. Or you can, uh, it's actually all puts it into uppercase, which I prefer if it's all in lowercase. But then you can clear the book away with this little cross here and you've got multiple pages. I think, yes, there's maximum two pages, which is good. That shows you the maximum size of a program. So you clear it off uh, like this and it'll then delete that program that's in here. But you can rename these. For example, if I wanted to rename this one to say Falling Edge, all I have to do is put it in Anvil. Instead of being Code Bible, I can say Code Falling Edge or something like that. Maybe Redstone Transition might be a better name. Let's call it that. Redstone trans uh, Transition. And then that's the name of this book. And cost is 1x XP, so we take that out of here. So that's, this book is now called code redstone transition I spelt it right anyway but I've also labeled up some more books up here these are pen and quills you can still use pen and, uh, pen and quills as you want to but I probably it's probably easier to use the the book with a code uh, the code book because the code Bible because you've got more space you've got more lines and it's easier to see so here I've got another recipe and it, let's have a look at the recipe it's actually the one called sound so I've got a book here called, and I'll tell you what, let's take this one off here like this, and then just copy this one across by shift right clicking it, and then have a look at this. So now what we've got here, so we've got move a value. This is a hexadecimal value, we've got so X in it. So zero X represents a hexadecimal value. Zero F F2 into the accumulator. Then it moves the accumulator right, and then it moves zero X F0, F1 to the accumulator and moves the accumulator right. Okay, it doesn't really matter what that means. We'll have a look at what that actually does mean by having a look at the book. Because beside this, I've got, it doesn't tell you, you can't really see how it seems it happens. We will see in a second when I run the program. So let's run the program. <laughs> it's actually the audio module. And as you can see, it's sort of making some tune or other. And you can then look at the book and we'll have a look at this because it's actually pretty good, the book. It, not everything's explained, but if I was looking at different bits and pieces, so those were serial protocols, because it's got a serial module. Here was the audio module, for example. So the audio module synthesizes sound based on numeric integers. This is something similar to when you put different blocks underneath the um, the redstone sound, which one's it called? 
the note module, uh, the note block, if you put different materials in the note block, generates different tones. Okay. So it says the audio module continues to read values from all four sides. So I think we can actually cut those back using the key. I haven't tried it, but I'm only using one, one side at the moment. And then it emits a sound based on a representation so sort of in a responsive fashion. I will forget about that. So it now tells you about the two different, the values in here. So the first two digits of this number were the pitch. And then the second, oh, the second byte of this is, oh, yeah, second byte. If we go for, for example, that would be zero, one, two, three. So let's say zip byte, zip byte one would be uh, the volume. So we can make max volumes 15, which is, so it actually says five, five. And then the last digit here is instrument. So you've got another five different types of instruments. So you add these two together, add these two together and it'll give you an example of how to generate sound, which is what I did. You can actually do, do it in different ways. So let's have a look at this by the book here. So if we, for example, if we wanted to make a, a different pitch, um, so we could then move into here well, shall we move, let's say, 0x. Let's put it as 5-0 or something like that. A 5-5, five, five, that would be a sensible one. Into the accumulator. And it has another, it has another thing here, which is called shift, I think. I'm not sure how it's spelt. It's, it's in red, which means I've got it wrong in valid opcode. So that's quite good. So it tells you you've got mistakes in it before you type them in. So we can actually go and have a look at the the book here, get the right, the right bit, and then have a look at blocks. Actually, it's the execution module is probably what the one I want to have a look at. Okay, so here it tells you about it. Oh, yes, it's telling you about the code bible. I'm just thinking if it's got a list of instructions in here. Oh, yes, it has, perfect. Okay. Those are the different registers, or sides, I think. Yes, the accumulator, the backup, nil is an, a virtual register, represents disposable values, so throw, throw things away in other words. And you've got the four ports up, down, left and right. And then you've got any, which is uh, all ports, I think. And then you've got last, which will is the actual port finished. I haven't read all of this, to be honest with you. And then we've got the language specification. Good. So what I'm trying to do is to find the instructions. So here we go. So what I want to do is to move into the accumulator a value, and then I want to shift that value to the left and then add, there we go, subtract, we got add, add, subtract, multiply, divide, negate, and then we've got bit operators. So we've got and, or, uh, which is exclusive or, if you know anything about this, and shift left. So we want to shift left, so it moves these bits then from the source register to the next value up. So for example, and it gives an example here. So if we shift four, shift the value of the accumulator by four bits. So zero X, zero F becomes zero X, F zero. So we want to move them by four, by eight. So let's do that and have a look at this program again. And the mouse works as well. So shift left. So we want to shift left, the. Um, Oh, the, actually the accumulator, I'm not sure this will work. We'll try it anyway. We want to shift it to four, eight bytes to the left. And then we want to add to the accumulator for the next value, which is going to be the instrument. So we'll add one to the accumulator. And then we need to shift that four bits to the left. Um, sorry, shift left four, and then we add another value in here, which is going to be the instrument. So we've, we've tried one and two, let's try and see what three does. Okay, and that's all we have to do. And then we have to move this value of the accumulator to the right. So let's see if this works. Now we've programmed this here like this. And you'll see, I've got an error here. And it says shift accumulator left. Maybe I don't need to do that. Maybe you don't need to shift the accumulator, just shift eight. 
Oh, probably that's correct, actually. Oh, it does, it does tell me here. I've got the red line in here. Then add one. I don't need to specify the accumulator. That'll do. Yeah, that looks reasonable now. So let's put that into here. Now it's now it's got no errors in it. Let's run it again. And you can see it's actually doing something slightly different. <laughs> so there we have it. There's another module done. Let's turn it off. Although that's probably drive it bonkers. So that's it for this episode. Relatively short, I think. But there's, these type of things are quite difficult because there's quite a lot of information to assimilate and it takes a bit of time. So I don't want to have long episodes when I do these these TIS 3D modules. We'll just probably try and do one per, per episode. And so, so until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.